Anthony, uh, one of the most common uh, passages that we get asked about is the John 1, John 1, mm -hmm. 1. So we have this uh, amazing and I think wonderful, beautiful passage. Yes. Uh, but I think terribly frequently misunderstood, even by Christians. So uh, as we're looking at this, I think that everyone uh, tends to want to go back and sort of reinterpret John's words uh, in some harmony with later creeds, post-biblical, mm. after the Bible was written. Mm. Uh, you had some of these creeds that developed all these sort of deep philosophical mm. ideas about Jesus. And mm. you go back, and, and what they're doing then is, I think, trying to bring those creeds and the word the ideas of those creeds back into what John was saying. Yeah. But if we just took a look at what John really is saying yeah. himself, without... Yeah thinking about and worrying about the creeds and yeah. later church yeah. uh, ideas and interpretations. Yeah. What was John really saying to the people in John 1? Yeah, and we should perhaps reiterate our earlier point that we mustn't let John contradict himself. So if we put our stake down in 17.3 and the other one in 20.31, which summarizes everything that John was going to say, the we grounding. mustn't discard the framework statements of yeah. John, that the Father is the only one who is true God. That must be allowed to stand. Mm. We mm. cannot turn to John 1 1 and say, now we've found two who are God. That's got to be wrong. Yeah. So, you're, uh, very important for the reader when they come to John 1 and 1 to not take it in isolation Absolutely. from John's entire message. Mm -hmm. And again, this amazing anchor that we find in the 20th chapter, verse 31, mm. he's telling you the intent of everything he's written. Yes. He's, I've written these things to you. Here's why. Yes. So that you would not understand that Jesus is God. Yes. That's not what it was. Or not that you would understand that he is a member of the Trinity or some such thing. No. John says, I've written all this to you mm. so that you would know this. Mm -hmm. What's the message? Mm -hmm. The message is so that you would know that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one right. of God, and that he is indeed not God, but rather God's son. That's right. Uh, God's human son, as we know. Right. Okay. So uh, if, if we begin to approach mm -hmm. that, then, uh, I'm going I'm to find in some of my Bible, you know, one of the Bibles I'm reading here, it starts John 1 1 out saying, the deity of Jesus Christ. Yes. But this is totally wrong, isn't it? Right. Totally wrong. Nothing about the deity of Jesus Christ here. In the beginning was the word, and the first point we have to make is that capital W on word is misleading. Yes. There are no capitals in the Greek text. You either have them written all in lower case or all in caps, but there's no editorializing such as we do in English. Mm. It's tendentious to write capital W because you're inviting the reader to believe that what it really says is in the beginning was the sun. Nice. of God. He doesn't say it. And by capitalizing the word word, yes. uh, we're subtly implying that there's a person there. But actually it's not in the original language at all, there. is it? Not there. The word word is there, but not in a capitalized okay. way. And not, not as trying a to do that, yeah. Not as a person. So what does John mean then when he's talking so, about word? Well, word, you know, if one starts with the Hebrew background, or if you look at the New Testament, indeed, the word word occurs hundreds of times, and it means a word. Mm. It means a thought, it means a plan, a design, an intention. It's an expression of the mind. Every word we utter is an expression of our minds. Mm. And it reminds us, of course, of Genesis, where God said, that the verb God said becomes the word in the New Testament. You often find that God is going to reign in the Old Testament and it becomes the kingdom in the New. You move from the verb in the Old Testament to the noun in the New. So, in the beginning God spoke let there be light. And you can see that John is playing now on that Genesis creation. Isn't mm -hmm. he? In the beginning, that's exactly the Septuagint version, in Archi, in the beginning. So we're meant to think of the Genesis creation, and think of the word, how God spoke. And then he says, the word was with God. Now, certainly in English, one person can be with another. In Hebrew idiom, in the book of Job particularly, and in Proverbs, wisdom can be with God. God. Wisdom is not another person. Wisdom is a she. It's lady wisdom. <laughs> she has done this and that. And she also dwells with prudence. So if wisdom is a la lady literally, who is prudence? You know, <laughs> two girls there together? No, that's a personification. 
And so is this. In the beginning, God expressed himself. He gave his divine formula for the universe, the immortality program. That word was with God. With God means in his plans, in his decrees. Lots of, occasion, okay, lots of occasions in the uh, book of Job where things like God's plan and his intention are said to be with him. And then that word was fully expressive of God. The Greek there suggests slightly like an adjective. It, we don't, can't do this in English, but the word was godish, if you could imagine. <laughs> yeah. Godlike, not quite that, that suggests a person, but godish, mm -hmm. expressive of God. That's to tie the word as closely as you can to God. We don't want any, any gaps or bridges separating them, right? God is his word, you are what you think. That kind of idea. So what we're saying at this point now is that people in uh, a, a rush to try to make these thoughts of John's correspond to later mm. post-biblical church thinking mm. have capitalized the word word yes. when we think they should not have yeah. and then implied or indicated that it means Jesus at that point and really it doesn't does it or it means Christ or it means Son. Son at that point, right. and, it, and it's not. That's and I think right. something that strikes me awfully uh, hard about that is there are words uh, that John could have used for Son or Jesus oh, yes. or Christ. He chose none of those. He says, in the beginning was not Jesus or Son. Christ or the Son. In the beginning was this word, the word by which God spoke. Uh, and the world came exactly. into existence. Yeah. Isn't it interesting yeah. that he uses the word Son and he done right. Later, yeah, we're not going to get to that for a while, are we? This, when the son appears issue. as the human son, exactly like Luke and Matthew right. gave us, then it's proper to talk of father and son. But here we're talking about God and his right. self-expression. Yes. And the other major point that convinced many of us many, many years ago now is that in all of the eight translations from the Greek language before the King James, mm. it didn't say all things were made through him, the word. It said all things are made through it. The word. Mm, mm, mm. And that's perfectly reasonable because logos in Greek is, is uh, grammatically a masculine word. That's nothing to do with sexual gender in language. You know, words in Greek have a grammatical gender. As in French, a table is feminine, but doesn't mean it's a sheet. Right. And so logos happens to be a masculine gender word. So you have to make up your mind. Are we talking about a person or not? Mm. If you think it's in the beginning with the sun, then the logos is all things are made through him. If you decide the Logos is the plan and the purpose and the mind of God, then all things are made through it. But you have eight translations then which were mm -hmm. uh, offering a recognition yes. that this uh, word yes. is in fact not a hymn right. but an it. And uh, right. King James kind of got something going there that they wasn't did. all that good, was it? They copied it actually from the Roman Catholics. From the Roman Catholics, yes. okay, all right. Yes. Uh, then, yeah, as we said, no translation is perfect, right. so in, uh, including right. the King James. There is an ambiguity here, and of course uh, it's easy for somebody who's trying to mess with the text to play uh, out of ambiguity. Yes, yes. I think they may have done that. I, I want to add a, qu a quotation from Qumran. You know, the Qumran literature is oh, yes. mm. straight out of the time of Jesus. Sure. What were other Jews doing there, the Essenes? And they have this statement, which will remind you of John 1, 3. Quote, by his knowledge, everything has been brought into being. And everything that is, God established by his purpose. And apart from God, nothing is done. Mm, Doesn't like that, that sound exactly like John? It's beautiful. Of isn't course. It? It's what a Jew would say. Yes. All done by his purpose. Beautiful. Nothing about the sun. Because the sun is the predicted descendant of David. And nobody was silly enough to think that the coming descendant of David, which he has to be to qualify, was already alive, older than his father David, older than his mother Mary. I mean, that's just, quite honestly, as we say in England, bonkers. <laughs> you know, it makes no right. rational sense at all. So stay with the word here until we get to the human Jesus, who is going to be born in due course in this passage. Then he's a person. Wrong. And John the Baptist is going to witness him. Then he's a real person. Now we, we're in a different uh, category of issues yes. here. Clearly. So Jesus is what the word became. Mm -hmm. Not one-to-one -one equivalent of course with not. the word. Right. That's clear, but that takes some thinking about for people. Yeah. And the word then became flesh in 14, right? The word right. became a human being. Sure. Of course, when he was born. That plan, that right. expression of God that God had been thinking about all of those years before this time. 
that then became realized and dwelt among us and we saw his glory that's correct the son's glory the glory as of an only begotten son from the father oh I see now we've got son father language and he was full of grace and truth of course God is full of grace and truth and his son is a chip off the old block uh, amazing it is wonderful amazing beautiful lofty language oh yeah and in the beginning was the word. Well, I go back to Genesis 1 and I find that the word be, that is going on there is the word spoken. Of it's course. God's spoken of word, course. which represents, as you say, God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. He's thinking about what he's going to do and yes. does it, I guess. And then he's, he's planning what he's going to do and then the plan comes into action. He, yes. And it was so. These things occurred. As God spoke, these things happened. They came into came to fruition. They, were, mm -hmm. they came into realization. Mm -hmm. Well, that same amazing Word of God, which resides in God, it's with Him, if you want to say. Yeah. I guess your Word is, is you, it's yes. with you. Yeah. It was Him, it was with Him. Mm -hmm. uh, and He operated by the, the amazing uh, wonder of His Word, yes. His plans, yes. His abilities, His wisdom. Now, none of that is Jesus Christ yet. But that's going to happen in the future from that time. And, uh, and we find uh, John is going to bring that to us in, uh, yes. in verse 14. The, the, that word, again, with a, with a little w, the that's word of God, that amazing word by which he spoke right. the world into existence, yes. that word yes. becomes flesh after a while. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? That's wonderful. And now we have Jesus. Still a human being. Yeah. And now we have the Son. But it's terribly sun. confusing. It uh, seems to me to just wreck havoc with it all mm -hmm. to try to put the sun mm -hmm. being the one back in the mm -hmm. beginning. It's not. Mm -hmm. uh, the, that, that really doesn't work at all. It makes no sense. That was the fatal move. I think you might say the, the most serious shift in the whole history of human thinking, bar none, mm -hmm. that altered the course of, of theological church history forever with wow. very poor results, I may say. Yeah. Yeah. So with our ten, tens of thousands of denominations all divided. We lost something of the simple purity of the messianic son of God faith mm. and we replaced it with some extraordinary philosophical categories mm. that are there from 150 AD. But those church leaders were all previously trained philosophers and they're bringing, reading their philosophy into the text. So what we have then, uh, we're dealing with John, the writer John, and we're just trying to get those layers peeled back yes. that have been placed on him mm. by uh, later theological thinking that wasn't even the theology of his time at all uh, and we're trying to get uh, that out of the picture for a moment take a look at John as a Jew yeah. as a one God believer mm -hmm. what would John really be saying here mm -hmm. and we find that that the later theologies are not warranted at all uh, exactly. not needful at all they're terribly confusing what John is saying is pretty simple in the beginning God made the heavens and the earth he did all that he did he had in, in his mind in him was his word yeah. if you will it's yeah. his word yeah. he made all these things God said these things and they came to pass Genesis 1 mm -hmm. there is no son involved in any of that there's no you know right. there's not, no other person involved just him that's right and so John is then saying the word, little w mm -hmm. word, uh, that that word that was in God, with God, was God, whatever you want to say, that word then came to an amazing fruition now right. in the person of Jesus Christ who, uh, who came into That's existence the, uh, very good in, solution. in Mary. Yeah. Absolutely. So the word is a personification, if you like, it's yeah. sort of as if it were a person, but not a person. Once you turn it into a person, then you're stuck with in the beginning was the son. Now try that. In the beginning was the son, the son was with the father, and the son was the father. <laughs> yes. It doesn't work. Yeah. In the beginning was the second member of the Trinity, and the second member of the Trinity was with the first member of the Trinity, and the second member of the Trinity was the first member of the Trinity. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. Try another model. In the beginning was God's self-expression, spoken word. It was with him, and it fully reflected God. As close to the heart of God as you can get. Mm -hmm. That's true of all of our words. Right. That word, happily, was expressed in a human flesh and blood human being, right? A real man. It's beautiful. Virginally begotten, however, not wow. just a man, because wow. he has no human father. Wonderful. That makes perfect sense. Now we're not knocking Luke 
and Matthew into nothing. We're not contradicting the rest of John. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we have blessed harmony and peace here. We can all go home relaxed and feeling, hey. And it's not that hard. And we don't have to hard. somehow twist, turn all the rest of the scriptures to try to match That's something right. that right. actually was much later in its That's development right. after the Bible. That's right. Uh, related to the creeds and all of that. We can just get with John here. Yeah. Think as John really did right. think. And it, it actually works pretty well, don't you? Yeah, it works very nicely. Yeah. The model will work beautifully. Yeah, I love it's it. Very satisfying. I love it. And yeah. I just want to add this additional point to what we're saying, that in verse 12, as many as received Jesus, we know this story well, he gave them the right to become God's children, even to those who believe in his name. Everything mm -hmm. he stands for. His name is not how to pronounce his name in Hebrew. It's nothing to do with that. His whole personality, everything he stands for, the declaration of his character, then in 13, his name, who were born, your translation says, who were born, the Christians. Now, this is a little bit labored, you might say, as you read. They weren't born of blood or the will of the flesh or will of a male, mm -hmm. but they were born of God. You might say, well, that strikes me as a little bit labored to have to say that if you're born again spiritually, now this isn't the lust of the male or the wish of the male, all that. And here is a fascinating fact. The earliest accounts we have of this text, earlier even than any of our manuscripts, mm. and I'm not, I'm not going to vouch for this, but it's at least something the public needs to know. The earliest versions of this in Tertullian and other church fathers, which antedate, they come earlier than the earliest Greek manuscripts that we now possess. Right. They read differently in this verse 13. They have a reference to Jesus, going back to verse 12. Children of God, to those who believe in his name, who was born, oh. who was born, this reminds you of the virgin birth, mm. not of blood, sometimes you talk about the two bloods, the male and the female blood, you know, combining in a person, uh, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a male, mm -hmm. but born of God. Wow. All you have to do is change that plural verb, they were born, a yeniti son in Greek, to a yenithi, singular. Mm -hmm. And Tertullian, the church father, actually says the Gnostics fiddled this text oh, really? and altered it. Wow. So again, I, I, since we don't have this in any of our extant Greek manuscripts, mm -hmm. we do have it in church fathers which are earlier evidences. Mm -hmm. And so it may be that, that the virgin birth has gotten mm -hmm. ousted here. You see why? Mm -hmm. Because the virginal birth will not mix with the idea of a pre-existing son. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Yeah. So they had to get rid of it, but it's right that John knew about the mm. virginal birth. He's simply reiterating what they all knew. Mm. And that was that the Son of God was the product of a miracle worked in Mary. I, I find that rather interesting. So this whole John 1 thing, if we, uh, if we read it with a, uh, an open mind and with a fresh mind, mm -hmm not trying to impose on it what we may have already believed right. uh, based on <laughs> church traditions mm -hmm. and creeds and later theologies, but just read it like John would have written it. Mm -hmm. Then we discover that the word John is writing about is not a person. Right. It is God's own personal word in the sense that your word is, is you, you and with you and it Absolutely. is you. That's so it is with God. Mm -hmm. God's word, a uh, little w, we look at that, that's perfectly Jewish, that's perfectly in harmony yeah. with what John and, and one God folks would have believed. Yeah. He's not talking at that point about the Son. No. And, uh, but that is going to happen. In verse 14, he's going to bring it to, to bear right. and say, wow, look mm -hmm. at this, folks. That word mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. that took form and shape in bringing light and, uh, and the oceans and the, uh, and the mountains and the world. That word of God that was so active as God spoke these things. Yeah. Now we're seeing uh, that manifest in His That's Son, right. this human Christ. being. And we're, now we're looking and we're seeing this, this in the form of Jesus Christ. It's wonderful. It makes beautiful sense. It doesn't mean that Jesus was back there no. in the beginning. No. But it means that what was going on in the beginning has caused Jesus to come into being. That's right. Yeah. Wonderful. So because to be a human being, you have to be begotten in the womb of your mother. That right. defines a human being. Anything else is not a human being. He can dress up as a human being. He can assume vague humanity. But he's not essentially a human person. And note, Dan, this is fascinating to me, the creeds actually said, you are to believe, the creed, the later non-biblical creed said, you can believe that Jesus 
is man, but you are not to believe that Jesus is a man. A man, yes, terrible, terrible thing. Once the public hears that, I hope that there would be an outcry and yeah. an outrage, say, what have you been telling us all these years? Yeah, you know, it's so interesting to me that when people uh, are saying that they believe in the Trinity or they believe in mm -hmm. the dual nature, all of that, they're, they're just saying these, this language that they've learned from the creeds and so rather than from the Bible. They try to impose it and then back on the Bible. But, but if, when people are saying those things, I don't think they realize what they really are embracing. If they exactly. really say, I believe in this dual nature business, oh, that sounds great. Well, if you begin to understand what it really is saying and what that idea, that theology does, you begin to realize it's exactly. terrible. What it does is an assault yes. against the man Christ yes. Jesus. It that's really right. is. Terrible assault. That's a, that's a great point, yes. Yeah. Yes, there's, there's a lot of um, suppression of information here. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. don't preach on this and so the public doesn't know. Yeah. They don't look it up in the dictionaries. Mm -hmm. They should. It's yeah. all readily available information. Don't you think at least uh, it would be fairer for those who are uh, Christian teachers mm -hmm. today at least to put before their oh, yes. congregations and the yes. public this is also An a option. very reasonable way to look at these things. Exactly right. Let the public then decide. Exactly Why don't right. we do that? That would be an that would be excellent. thing. But no, we don't want to do that. We want yeah. to put you under the gun so to speak, yes. and you must believe what we say about it, and we're not going to give you all the information you need. We're not going to tell you that. We're not going to tell you to, that the Word of God would have been His actual own Word, Himself. Yes. It is Him, it's with Him, and He speaks it forth, and it's amazing, but it, yes. it's like your Word or my Word, but this is exactly. God's Word, very mighty. Yes. And, uh, and that there is no Son being spoken of back there in the beginning, uh, in John's narrative, Correct. but the Son comes through into existence because of the power of that same yeah. word, little w, right. of God, yes. bringing him into existence right. in verse 14. Now, I think it would be fair at least for teachers to yes. tell their congregations, yes, indeed. this is a way you could look yes. at this. Without getting could, kicked out. Yeah, without and, and not, we're not going to threaten you because this may be what John actually meant. Why don't we go ahead and give, give right. the public the opportunity to know these things? We've been a little hoodoo. We've been a little hoodoo, as the saying is, uh, with uh, not all the information that we could have been well, given. Well, we have been, been good in education in church. Uh, yeah. Churches where you go uh, and a certain amount of hype gets yeah. you through can be. Yeah. Very little intellectual content. Yeah. Whereas Jesus said, you call me rabbi and lord, you're doing well. Mm. He spent hours teaching in teaching. the temple. Every more people don't even know that. Where he's a rabbi first, and so his teaching tended to get lost and wasn't recovered at the Reformation. Mm. We need to go back and say, what did Jesus teach about himself? Well, he says, I'm the Christ, right. the son of the living God. Never said, I am God. That would yes. have been blasphemous nonsense. Never did? Never, Never did. did. Yeah. The claim to be son of God and to sit at the right hand of the Father is a huge Wrong. claim, enough yes. to get him accused of blasphemy and put to death, that's true. But he did not claim the maddest thing of all, which is actually to be God. So when C.S. Lewis tells us that he's either mad, bad, or God, we're <laughs> yes. getting a false dilemma put to us. Yes. He's neither of those. He's not mad. He's certainly not bad. He's not God. He's the Messiah, the <laughs> Son of God, which is said in every book in the New Testament. Yes, wonderful. I love it. I'm glancing uh, in, in accordance with what you're saying there. Nobody has ever seen God any time. We've got an 18. Well, that's pretty straight. If you're, you've just presented Jesus God, who <laughs> clearly was, who was, who was seen. Right. People saw him. Yeah. And now you've got, no one has ever seen God at any time. Mm. And then the only begotten God, that's a very uncertain text. It probably isn't right, but the only begotten Son is probably right. It doesn't matter. Nobody's seen God at any time. But they did see Jesus, so how does that work? Yeah. It, it's very confusing. Yeah. Ask the ordinary person how to deal with three X's is really one X. You know, this is Yahweh, this is Yahweh, this is Yahweh, makes one Yahweh. And they're thrown into a massive embarrassment. And so they should. Because I think the church has taken them for a ride. But please note that most people are infatuated with this. <laughs> That's right. It's been around for a while. Well, you know, it's interesting to me, and I, I, I think also you're right about uh, this verse 18, uh, you know, we have, it seems like translation has mm. uh, kind of run a little rampant mm -hmm. uh, in some of these things. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I agree, I guess you could argue this, but I will say this from, uh, from a context standing 
yes. in the larger picture with John. Verse 18, uh, the only begotten God. Crazy. Do we really think God was begotten? Oh, come please now. Uh, I think the the, uh, the texts that read the uh, the only begotten Son, Son uh, is, is, makes much, much more sense and works then with the, uh, completely here. It's the only begotten Son of God, the of human course. Jesus, who That's has right. declared yep. God to us. And he's also and in the bosom of the Father. And people yeah. read that to mean he was in the bosom of the Father before he was born. No, no. That isn't what it says. He's always, since he began to exist, he's always been in the closest relationship with his father. That's sure. wonderful. And, uh, and we can truthfully say uh, uh, that as John is writing this, Jesus is in heaven. Whatever you want to say about that phrase, yeah. uh, it's sort of true, but it's, it's, again, it's not retrospective. No. It's not talking about no. it. No. We've got to be very careful. We're not looking forward to the glorious future of Messiah and his kingdom yeah. and losing it all in, in the misty ages of time yes, yes, in, yes. in a foggy philosophical language some people will say to me on email when I say that Jesus began to exist I'm using the Greek term yenao which means to cause to begin to exist they say oh you're using finite logic <laughs> well what pray tell would be infinite logic <laughs> it would be nonsense yes. the idea is that God has to speak to us only in language we couldn't understand well that's destroyed the Bible right away Guess what? God had to use words that he gave to us as language in order to be intelligible. Mm. So anybody who gets into waffling about this is infinite language we're supposed to deal with, therefore words don't mean what they say, has really lost it. Well, if a person is going to say, well, the words don't mean what they say, then they can mean whatever anybody wants them to say. How do you know that yours, what you're saying no, as a person then is right? The rest is confusion. I, that's right. I think it's all over it's that. Done we can no longer uh, depend on uh, uh, the we've, scriptures. We've entered the realm of hot ice cubes, married bachelors, and square circles. Yeah. And we might as well give up the whole... Might as well let it go. Yeah, that's right. Forget it all. Well, anyway, I'll tell you this. To me, I like this simpler, easier mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. of what John was saying here and what he meant than this very complicated, confusing, frustrating uh, at times uh, set of notions have been imposed on what John said. But That's now right. people have heard the other so much that they start reading this and say, oh, well, this says, you know, well, wait a minute. Uh, just look at it fresh and yeah. take it uh, yeah. from, uh, from this simpler point of view. The easier view is usually right. And this time, yeah. it is. It is, is right. Yeah. I will. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Love the simplicity uh, in John. I don't need all that complexity now. You know, I'm just a simple fellow. Yeah. I, I enjoy looking and seeing things that are understandable, make sense, mm -hmm. and uh, they would have uh, made sense to John's yes. readers in the beginning. With the rest yeah. of Scripture. Yeah. Without yeah. contradicting right. it all. That's right. Well, thanks, Anthony. Thank it's you. Great stuff.